Ohio State fans are having what they call a normal one. Uh, I should add media, but I think you all inferred what I was talking to when I said Ohio State fans. When it comes to Tony Alford departing Columbus for Michigan, and uh, we are actually going to uh, finally be having our first meeting with Wink Martindale, as well as uh, Kirk Campbell. Not our first meeting, but first as the offensive coordinator on Friday. So let's talk about both things. Let's talk about Tony Alford and the reaction to it. And let's talk about what I want to know is very specifically from both men as we approach spring ball, which starts next week on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Thursday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire. Through USA Today Sports Media Group, I would say this is late, but you ate something p.m. for me to record this podcast is not normally late for me however i would have done it a little earlier but i and for the, the crypticism that we constantly have on this show i'll just say wait until august or september and you'll find out what it was uh that uh i was doing yes you're gonna have to wait that long uh but uh you can tie it back to my clothing that's all i can say about it um nonetheless uh it has been hilarious to kind of get home get settled, get situated, and start scrolling through uh, the social media and seeing just kind of more of the reactions in Columbus to Tony Alford's departure from, uh, from Ohio State to Michigan because it is chock full of hilarity. And for those who have really enjoyed the schadenfreude uh, that has come out of Ohio State, it is continued. It's the gift that keeps giving, especially after the best offseason ever Suddenly, maybe there's just a, you know, there's a few uh, chinks in the armor. You know, there's, it's, it's not maybe as hunky-dory uh, the Ryan Day experience. So, uh, it is, uh, we're going to get to some, a couple of my favorite reactions that I've seen. Both are from media people, but we're going we're gonna to kind of look for a, little, a few more and see if we can't find a few more, too. Um, I like this one that was from yesterday. Anthony Broom quote tweeted this. And it was very cheeky. He says, the takes on Tony Alford are starting to catapult out of Columbus. Wink, wink. Um, But this comes from from the nemesis of, uh, was it William Cawthor? Or was it, uh, I can't remember which which one it was, Uh, who who was very upset with Jay Book in general. I mean, he, I made his show quite a few times, so he can make ours a few times. He said, and I quote, Jay Book did. I mentioned earlier that I thought Tony was a good man. And I know what he did will make many feel a certain way. However, now knowing that he's had the Michigan job for weeks while still going through practice installations and gathering all of the recruiting info on the way out is absolutely nasty, nasty work. Now, the fun part of that, I wish it would show it right here, but it doesn't. Um, It uh, is that Tony Alford actually responded to him and said, not true. Of course, it got met with a bunch of vitriol from Ohio State fans, but uh, it's uh, it's certainly some coping, right? It's it's you know, hey man, you're supposed to be uh, someone that's like a a media type person for Bucknuts. I I don't know that you're a full timer. I don't believe you are, Uh, but like, bro, like mentioned earlier, you thought he was a good man, and you know that he felt like a lot of people felt that certain way, right? Um. But that's just one of those things like where rivalries get so toxic, right? I know a lot of you feel that way, but I know a lot of you also feel like you've got Ohio State friends, you've got Ohio State family, you got Michigan State friends, you got Michigan State family, right? I have both. I have, I mean, I have a cousin who grew up a Michigan fan, went to Michigan State, and he is now diehard green and white. Makes no sense to me, but that's where where he is. He roots against Michigan after having rooted for Michigan for 17 years. Uh, and I, my entire dad's side of the family is from the state of Ohio and they are all Ohio state fans. So I, I, I see all sides of it. Right. So, um, it, it, but it's one of those things where I just feel like rivalries shouldn't make you lose your humanity. Right. But that's kind of where we're at in general. And if, if you are, especially as a media type person looking at uh, a coach going to another school, it happens to be the school you like the least. 
and that is your response. Like, I thought you were a good guy, but it turns out, no, you're not. You're a terrible dude. Like, you get a little perspective on your life a little bit. And I know we all had our reactions to Greg Madison. I didn't feel like Greg Madison was suddenly a bad dude because he went to Ohio State. It, it does have a little bit of a turncoat, and I think that Ohio State fans uh, can feel that way. I think that's fine, right? As long as it's not like, man, this dude really needs a kidney, and I have a kidney that I'm willing to give, but I'm not going to give it to him because he betrayed me. That's going a little far. I'm not saying that's what he's saying. It's just silly, silly, silly. But not as silly as this article written by Land Grant Holy Land at SB Nation. Uh, I got to give you the lead in and then we'll, we'll read some of the article together because it is absolute gold, Jerry, gold. Michigan continues its practice of stealing. That's cute. It's really cute. As Tony Alford heads to Ann Arbor. Benedict Arnold Alford spent the first week of spring practice studying Chip Kelly's new offense, and now will take everything he learned to TTUN. Shame on you, Tony. And uh, you get to the actual article. Tony Judas. They're going for all of the turncoat type uh, verbiage here. Judas Alford quits Ohio State to join the dark side, stealing spring practice plans more. Uh, What makes it funny is you say the dark side, and then it shows uh, they have a picture of uh, Alford standing next to Ryan Day. They're both wearing all black. Um, Red tends to be the color of evil. Ohio State's band dresses in a kind of a nefarious manner, and uh, they play certain songs that sound like they were birthed from the seventh pit of hell, according to Dante's Inferno. So tell me which one's the dark side and which one's the, like, you know, Michigan's, you know, out there, Mr. Brightside and Ohio State's, da, 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 you know, it's just hilarious. So um, this is by Matt Tamanini, co-managing editor of Land Grant Holy Land. Uh, so that's pretty much like the bulk of what he's got there, but it's just, it, this is mostly like a, um, it, it's mostly just a bunch of Twitter reactions and, and like kind of a, uh, a bunch of stuff, but I mean, he has a little lead. He says, look, we get it. Your days are busy. You don't have time to read all the stories and tweets from three dozen websites dedicated to covering Ohio state, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it, it they don't really have a whole thing there. Um, uh, they, I was really hoping for it. I, I saw the lead and I'm like, they've got, it. we're going to uncover this together. turns out not much to it. Um, but, uh, it is a heck of a lot of fun to see these types of reactions from Ohio State. You've got fans like Athletes in Space, who I actually really enjoy when I see him come up on my uh, Twitter for you. Says, dang man, really going to miss Tony Alford and his elite recruiting. He was always especially strong, closing around signing day, and it just shows that uh, uh, some of the people that he missed, uh, B. John Robinson flipping from Ohio State to Texas, and and it's like all the ones that they lost as if – as if anyone's got a 100% track record. There's no one out there that doesn't lose uh, recruits, whether they flip or they go elsewhere, right? Uh, so there's just a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun coping and seething and all of that. And I think one of the best parts of it is just how quickly Michigan got this done because I don't, I don't believe that there was actually like a, he had like a couple week uh, – Period. You're right. I think that Michigan started vetting him early. Maybe they had like a, hey, any interest in being pride loose? Maybe. All right. Hold on. Let's do our due diligence. All right. Due diligence done. You, you, you in? Okay. I'm in. Right. I don't think it's something nefarious. Maybe it is. And that'll be a heck of a lot of fun. But uh, you see a lot of people say he didn't have a lot of high end recruits. And we were able to dispel that just based off of what we went through um, yesterday. Travion Henderson, J.K. Dobbins, Evan Pryor, like he he got a lot of dudes. Dexter Williams at Notre Dame, all that stuff. So um, it's fun. What's more fun is that it's starting to really get the attention of a lot of people uh, at, uh, as far as the recruiting is part is concerned. Uh, you're starting to hear from a lot of recruits. We're going to dig into that a little bit more as we continue this conversation. And then we'll, after that, we will get into the Wink and uh, Kirk uh, component of it all. But before we do that, 
This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of, of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Tennessee Vols can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. Player of the Year candidate Dalton Necht has carried the Vols all season and has made them a team to watch in March. So take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. You just cannot beat an Ohio State fan base that's in upheaval. And that's where we're at. Now, Michigan's somewhat in upheaval in some regards. Bright basketball exists. I think most people just aren't paying attention to it. Um, Lord knows I haven't. <laughs> so, um, I paid a little attention to it. Not, I paid more attention this year than last. But certainly those were the two years in which I... I've done the least since I've covered Michigan because here's the thing. If y'all don't care, I'm not going to care either. And if I don't care, chances are y'all don't care. So I'm sure there's some of you out there who are wincing being like, I care. I want to hear more about your opinion on basketball. And there's plenty of people out there that like last year that were like, please stop talking about basketball. You're not good at it. Well, I'm better at it when I pay more attention. Um, and there was just no reason to really dig in when we've got football things to talk about. Michigan football is, uh, Winning national championships and such and such. Uh, anyhow, always uh, pivoting here, I am. So uh, Michigan is uh, getting a little bit of a bump from uh, Tony Alford. You're seeing all kinds of different people reporting, uh, different recruits who are starting to, uh, starting to really pay more attention, uh, right? Like uh, Marquise Davis is uh, one of them. Uh, he is uh, based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, he is a running back athlete. He strongly was looking at Ohio State. This is by EJ Holland, uh, but he is now looking at Ohio, uh, at sorry at Michigan. He is one of the the people that uh, at least on the side of um, Alford, he's starting to look at, and he's on three has him as the 186 player in the country. Uh, he's 102 by on three's actual ranking, their proprietary ranking, not their industry ranking, which is similar to the 24 seven sports composite. You've got Josh Henschke reporting that Jordan Davison is now considering making a visit to Ann Arbor. Uh, he is according to 24 seven sports, uh, the number 83 player in the country in the seventh ranked running back. He's out of modern day, uh, there in uh, Santa Ana, which is basically Disneyland. Um, but he is, I believe, according to rivals, considered a five star. So, uh, there are recruits that are starting to kind of perk up and starting to see, uh, Oh, Hey, Tony Alford, that, that might be the way to go. You know, Michigan might be the way to go, which I mean, finally, it's like, they've been trying, they've needed exactly this, right? Because they win the national championship and they have yet to get even a commitment since then, which is absolutely wild. Uh, but, uh, Zach Libby's got all kinds of reactions, whether it's from, uh, people who were, uh, already committed. Micah Capana's, uh, father spoke up about it. Jordan Marshall says he's super excited to be coached by him, that they have a special bond. Uh, he's got more from, uh, Marquise Davis saying, I think it was a good switch. I support it. We're pretty close. Uh, you've got, uh, a bunch of other guys here. Uh, that uh, the aforementioned Jordan Davison says great hire to me coach Alfred and I have a great relationship happy for him so that is certainly at least a switch to some degree Mike Hart a great developer I know we talked about that uh, on the uh, Wednesday night episode the mailbag great developer uh, Alford I think has done a good job right like I, I understand like Hassan Haskins is the the first run running back to be drafted in eons for Michigan. And it didn't go like super, super high, but like Corum will probably break that. And Donovan Edwards will certainly probably go even higher just because his skill set is a little bit more diverse as long as he lives up to his expectations. But uh I mean you look at JK Dobbins. I mean, he still did coach Ezekiel Elliott. Uh Travion Henderson is certainly gonna be a high end draft pick. 
Heck, he coached Quinshot Judkins for a minute. <laughs> Maybe it was about a minute. Um, but uh, I think that that is really going to pay big dividends for Michigan uh, on the recruiting trail because he is a good coach. As much as Ohio State people will try to convince you, despite their tweets saying otherwise that people are digging up, that, oh, you know, there's a reason why he wasn't renewed after 2023. And all of that. Listen, that might even be true to some degree, right? Sometimes, like, you know, they brought in a new offensive coordinator and Chip Kelly, and maybe he doesn't fit. Or the way I look at it more so is now suddenly he has a similar stable of backs. I understand that there are people that look at Travion and Quinshawn and say that's a better a better scenario. But if which if you're a position coach, which would you rather be at if you're a running backs coach? Michigan or Ohio State? Because Ohio State's long had a stable of really strong backs, but since Ryan Day has been the head coach, how much do they use them? They really do not, right? I mean, it, it's, it's, they really want to pass the ball. That's what they want to do. And it's kind of funny because they don't really, they don't have the quarterback right now. They've got all kinds of receivers. They've got great running backs right now, but Ryan Day, he wants to get away from the run game as fast as he possibly can. And he's shown that year in, year out. Whereas Alfred can come to Michigan and he's like, okay, well, Michigan wants to run the ball. Michigan has the offensive line that it's going to be able to run the ball. There is a commitment to it that doesn't exist in Columbus. So it makes a lot more sense just from a logistical standpoint. Just like if you are the highest flying wide receiver coach, why would you come to Michigan at this juncture? You wouldn't. It just makes more sense. So that's that. Uh, anyway, all right. So uh, we are to answer the question from yesterday. We we have our first spring availability, and it comes before spring practice opens. Glory, glory, hallelujah! Uh, kind of surprised <laughs> by that, but we uh, are in fact uh, going to be meeting tomorrow with both of the coordinators. What are the specific things that I want to know from each of them? Let's talk about that. And we're going to get into it here in just a moment. But before we do, listen. Today, I really could have used this device because my TV has uh, Google built in. It decided it wasn't going to connect to the Internet. It was it, I spent two and a half hours after I got home that I, there was no relaxing. I was trying to figure out how to get my TV to connect to the Internet. And it took two hours to get it to work. And uh, multiple phone calls and after I tried doing everything in my power. But I would have had to worry about that if I had a Fire TV. Because Fire TV, it's your destination from, for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, the college basketball tournament, you got the conference tournaments going on right now, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels as well to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On. And most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well, Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all of the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, a heck of a lot more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos. I've actually watched some cooking videos on uh, the Fire TV in my bedroom. Uh, the uh, well, some Curtis Stone stuff. Well, you can check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. So, learn more Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Continuing on, uh, let me make sure I've got the right thing because I, I pulled up two things. Okay, passion, drive, and patience brings home the winning trophies. Also, keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed to fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Just kind of checking some things here. I don't know if uh, Michigan's still... Okay, now they, they, they do have... 
Tony Alford now in the directory. He wasn't in the directory uh, for the last night's episode. So he is officially the directory. Obviously, they already made the announcement, but I was checking uh, to see if that was done. Uh, but also in the directory is Don Wink Martindale. And long been in the directory is Kirk Campbell, your respective defensive and offensive coordinators of the Michigan Wolverines entering the 2024 season. So uh, we are meeting with them on Friday. That's uh, a bit earlier than I anticipated, right? You know, that maybe maybe the, the stoicism of the Jim Harbaugh era is gone. I don't know. We will find out tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we are going to get to meet with uh, both coordinators and start to get to know a little bit about the, uh, the systems and the strategies and such. And honestly, we're just going to start to get to know Wink Martindale. And I'm excited about that. Obviously, the thing that I want to know most about, uh, about this team in general is defensively, what is it going to look like? Is it going to be more of Wink imparting his own vision of what the Wolverines could, you know, can be? What like his own style? Is it going to be a terminology change? He didn't really he, he, like he mentioned different terminology. I don't know if that means he's actually going to change the terminology or if he was just kind of speaking in platitudes. Uh, but uh, will there be a how much change will there be, or will it be more? He's going to come in and be like, "Hey, I know what this is. We're going to keep all of the terminology the same. I'm going to be the one that adapts, and we're going to go from there." I think. A marriage of both worlds, right? Because you don't want to necessarily, you know, take a coach and that's, you know, an old dog and teach him new tricks, right? But at the same time, he also needs to be able to run, you know, a semblance of what they have been running, which again was, as he said in the, uh, in the trenches interview, he is the OG of the system. So uh, take that for those of the people that said that's not true. They're not similar, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, he said it himself. He's the OG of the system. Uh, so, uh, I, I am curious mostly about that. I want to hear more. He talked a little bit about the defensive front yesterday, but I want to hear more of like his specific thoughts on individual players. That's always a really interesting view, right? How much have you delved into what these players are capable of? Who's impressed you and who, what names are the ones that maybe stand out that aren't ones that we kind of were familiar with already, right? Like, it's going to be easy to be like, yeah, Kenneth Grant, Mason Graham, Will Johnson. All right. And he's already mentioned those three guys in his, in the trenches interview. But like, does a Zeke Barry get mentioned? Does like a, a Cody Jones, you know, does a Cam Brandt or an Eno Etta do, or a Trey Pierce? What, what, you know, but especially because they haven't had spring practice yet. So who stands out to him? Like, how much has he gone maybe into last year's practice film? And just, t you know, taking a look and said, all right, I can work with that. You know, that's going to work for what I want to do. I might want to do things a little bit differently and that's going to work. Or I see the building blocks there. That's, I think, the important thing there. For Kirk Campbell, it, it's going to be, you know, how much has you, his time at Old Dominion influenced where he's at? Now is a, returning as an offensive coordinator. How much has his time at Michigan influenced that as well as in a quarterback's coach and a one-game offensive coordinator? How has he grown from that? Quarterback battle is obviously huge. Um, I, I like the question from yesterday about the Debo Samuel. Like Donovan Edwards is a Debo Samuel type. You know, how, how can you maybe be a little bit more creative with him? You know, and having some of the other backs you have, does it allow you to maybe do that? You got him for another year. You got to use him. <laughs> it would be malpractice if you didn't. What are you going to do there? Um, wide receivers, right? Like it feels like kind of a thin position group. You just lost two of the three guys from the 2022 class. So wide receiver group, who, who's going to be those guys, right? Uh, you know, is it, is it going to be Frederick Moore plus Samaj Morgan plus Tyler Morris? Or, you know, is there someone else? Is Peyton O'Leary ready for prime time? I know that won't exactly make people happy if that's the case. But there's a lot of things in the offense that I want to know. And again, how much are things staying the same versus how much are things changing? Right? I think that there will be changes. I know that a lot of people will look at it and say, well, it's the consistency. And I think that that is mostly true. But you also can't expect Sharon Moore to be Jim Harbaugh. You can't expect Kirk Campbell to be Sharon Moore. You can't expect Wink Martindale to be Jesse Minter. Just like you couldn't expect Jesse Minter or Mike McDonald to be Wink Martindale. So how, how much is there kind of being pliable uh, how, do, how much is that mixed with consistency? 
I think that that is going to be a, a really fun thing to learn both through the interview process as well as through actually seeing it once we get to the spring game. Maybe we'll even get to see a practice. You know, Jim Harbaugh did have an open practice in 2019 in a beautiful, beautiful April day where it was like unbelievably warm. It was like 70 degrees in April. And uh, it was beautiful the day the spring game a week later. And then the day after that, Game of Thrones uh, final season started and we all got a little sad. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. We will react to some of the things that aforementioned coordinators say in their press conference. That will be a Friday evening-ish episode. Uh, So look forward to that. Understand the timing there. And we will talk about it then. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. Peace. Peace.